I started this off by doing a yellow wash of the background a few times. Now on to layering some green over the yellow. Again, I put several layers of green just to deepen the color and try to blur it out. The goal of this is to make it look like a blurry, blown out forest in the background. It's kind of like the depth of field, like you get in a camera. Now what I'm doing is layering the reds and browns, sort of mimicking branches and, and whatnot in the background. Again, doing several layers with the ink tints, Just let it dry and you can layer and layer over top. You can do as many layers as you want. Varying up the, the intensity of the reds, adding some black into it, darkening the color where needed. Blues over top just to add some depth to the, uh, the foliage in the background. You don't want a flat image or a flat background. You want it to to look like there's some layers. Again, I just keep layering and layering. Right there, I was using the white directly just to soften up. With the ink tents, you can just use it directly from the blocks, or you can mix the colors. As you can tell, I spend a lot of time in the background. You don't want to make the mistake of just rushing the background. Now I'm starting on the bird, adding a little yellow to the beak. Then moving on to the the black. Again with the ink tents, you can start with the dark colors and layer your light colors over top. They're not restricted in that way. There I continue with the light colors, adding some yellow, some white. I use the blow dryer to uh to dry before I add any other layers. There, I'm adding some uh, some of the yellow. You can tell it's pretty intense yellow. It's pretty much just straight yellow with a little bit of water mixed on the palette. Adding in some darker values just to get some contrast and some layering going on the, the chest of the bird. A lot of water mixed with the yellow. Again, continue with the blacks, just building up the contrast. Get more yellows. Mix with a little black to darken the color. There, I'm putting a real light wash of blue over top. With the ink tents, you don't want to add white. If you need a lighter color, you just add more water. Adding some more blue, putting up the layers, putting up the contrast. Defining the shapes of the bird. Remember to keep going in the shape of the feathers. Follow the, where they go, not how you think they go. And 
this is a fairly small piece of 5x7, so I'm not going to get much detail, but I try to put them as much as I can. And remember with the ink tent, you can bounce around light to dark, dark to light, so you're not really restricted in that way. If you need to mess, if you mess up or need to fix an area, just put some white over top and keep going. As you can see, I'm just building up color, adding some reds to define the shape. Adding some highlights, adding some dark areas. In any of your drawings, you want to look for contrast. That's what makes your picture come to life. You don't want a flat image. You want to look for your darkest darks and your lightest lights. Continue to build up the black. Just working on the details now. As you can see, if I don't like a spot, I can use some paper towel just to lift up the, the ink tents. Adding some darker blues, defining the defining the feathers there. I use a liner brush for most of this just to get some really fine details. Some portions I use the pencils directly. But with the liner brush I can get a lot finer of a detail, especially in a small five by seven piece like this. And some dark blues. To finally some shapes of the head more and some dark areas. Again, just slowly building up. Adding some light red into it. Continuing to define shapes, define the, the feathers. The whites aren't white, as you can tell there's some blue, some purple, various colors in the white of the bird. I just don't leave it white. The only white in the picture is the highlight of the eyes. Continue to work around the eyes. Continue to refine the shape of the bird. Some dark blues, some red. Here I'm using straight from the intense blocks just to get a bold yellow in there. Washing over some of the red, tone it down. You can tell on the bottom of the bird that's a little bit darker. To 
Fighting the beak a little more, adding some shadows. As you can see, I kind of bounce around the piece. Getting some really dark blacks in there now, directly from the intense blocks. The less water you have, the more opaque the color will be. There, just laid some white directly with the pencil. Down some dark color of the beak. Using some black directly just to get a really dark color in there. Laying down some white directly from the intense blocks. As I did before. When I lay down the pencil, I can go over it with a just a wash of the water just to activate it. Again, letting each layer dry before I add a new layer on top. There, using the liner brush again just to get some fine detail in there. continue to work at it a lot of artists stop before it's actually finished you want to keep working to the feet the legs I just blocked in the the yellow and some dark shadows now under the wood adding a little wash black just to define the the ridges of the wood going over the the legs with some dark brown adding some shadows there i'm throwing on some black just to further define the shadows to find the contrast of the legs adding some details with the black some of the ridges of the feet. Adding a little light wash of orange over there just to find the, the color a little more of the, the legs and the feet. Now putting in the dark colors of the, the wood, the details of the wood, the cracks, the ridges. Basically all the shadows of the wood. Like I said before, with the ink tench, you can lay down the, the dark colors first and then do the washes of the light color over top. Just keep working and working, defining the shape of the wood. I don't copy the reference photo exactly. I just use it more as a guideline. Except for the uh, the obvious large cracks. Here laying a wash of light brown over top. Leaving some of the highlights. As you'll see, you'll notice the wood is not just one color brown. There's various colors of 
browns, reds, oranges that I lay down to the to get the color of the wood. Wash of a little darker shade of brown mixed with a little red. Just keep working at it until I feel it's finished. Got to follow the grain of the wood. In this piece of wood, you know, the grain's going vertical, so you got to follow that. You just don't want to add any horizontal marks just for the sake of it. Here I'm adding some dark into that crevice there, the large crack. Just defining that more. That's just a wash of black, a little touch of water. And at this stage, some artists may have stopped thinking it's done, but you know, keep defining things. Some pencil directly just to get some color down, activating it. As you can see, it darkened things up in those little highlighted ridges. And you can see all the the bumps there in the wood. going over black with the pencil directly same thing with the leg just to get a really dark color in there for a shadow I really like the ink tints for that you can just bounce from light to dark dark to light you don't have to worry about layers and with the ink tints you can pretty much just get unlimited layers just imagine how it's just ink and and it dries permanent. Adding some definition to the foot. Final touches on the wood. You can see the shadow on the wood underneath the bird there. Adding a little bit of shadow underneath its feet. Just a little touch like that just to make it pop out. Drying the piece. Further adding little details into the wood. Pencil directly, as you can see, just adding some little feathers, little touches like that just to make the piece come alive. Some of that wasn't seen in the reference photo, but as the artist, you want to take some liberties just to make your piece a little bit better. And that's about it.